are standing in front of Seven Passages to a Flight, a work by the artist Faith Ringgold. Now this was created by the artist and a session by the museum in 1995. And it's a beautiful piece. We are surrounded by beautiful works in this exhibition. You may be wondering why of all the works in this exhibition did I choose to focus on this one today? Well, I always have my reasons. Number one is, you've probably already noticed in looking at this piece, that it's made with fabric. And as such, when we have a work in the museum that's made with a delicate material like fabric or paper, there's a limited amount of time that it can be on view. This work will go down from the walls on February 10th when the exhibition closes, and then it'll go to sleep in the vaults for a while and probably not come back on view for some time. So I thought, take advantage of it while you can. Also, I feel a personal connection with this work. Um, growing up, I grew up in the Midwest, and every summer we would go to the State Fair. And one of my favorite spaces was the Quilt Pavilion. Now, part of that was because it was air-conditioned, and we're talking about Indiana summers. But the other part was that I felt a real connection to that type of art making. And that really helps us segue into talking more about Ringgold. Um, her work, she's known for a lot of different types of work. She's known for paintings, prints, masks, soft sculpture, children's books. Most famously, she's known for story quilts like this one. And all of her work ties into this idea of her telling the story of being an African-American woman. So it's tying into that idea of individual experience, just as my experience with the quilt pavilion ties into my own memories. And we're going to talk more in depth about this piece and kind of talk about it part by part. But before I launch into that, I want to tell you a little bit about the artist, some biographical information. But let me share with you that this work is actually a um, biographical narrative about Ringgold. So when we start dissecting it and talking more about it, we're going to learn even more about her. But to start with, let me tell you about Faith Ringgold. So Faith Ringgold was born um, Faith Jones on October 8, 1930. She was born in Harlem, and this was the time of the Harlem Renaissance, which if you're unfamiliar is this flowering of African-American intellectuals. And in, this is in the 1920s and 30s. So imagine being born in that atmosphere and the influence that it must have on you as a young African-American. And Faith Ringgold started in art as a young person. Like many artists do, she dabbled. But it wasn't until she was later in her school years that she decided, made a concrete decision to be an artist and pursue that as a life dream, which, you know, all the odds against her, she was determined. And of course, she made it happen, which is very exciting. Um, Faith also learned the art of quilting early on. She learned this from her mother. Her mother's name is Willie. Now, Willie actually worked with Faith to construct many of her story quilts. So this is just an example of many that she's created through her lifetime. Willie was a pretty well-known fashion designer in Harlem. So she knew her way around a needle and thread. And so I love the image of the two of them working together and bringing Faith's end of sort of the fine art aspect and Willie's end of this traditional craft and coming together as partners. And I have a great picture that I found. It's a little fuzzy, but I'm going to pass it around. And it's actually an image of Ringgold and her mother at work on one of her previous story quilts. So I'll pass it around so you can get a closer look. Always nice to have an image of the artist in your head, right? Um, and quilt making, as we know, is an African-American tradition. It's also a tradition in Ringgold's family. She comes from five generations of quilt makers. So obviously this is important to her, important to her um, identity. And she's bringing that into her artwork when she creates pieces like this. Now, whatever medium she's working in, Ringgold is focusing on her energies on telling the story of African-Americans. And more specifically, she's looking at it from the perspective of an African-American woman, her perspective. And she brings that into every piece that she creates. So we're going to take those thoughts, and now we're going to look specifically at this piece. And I'm going to tell you about it, and we're going to do it kind of from the outside in. 
I just find that kind of a logical way to go about it. But first let me share with you that this is a hand stenciled quilt form. Um, the panels on the inside are actually etchings, which is a form of printmaking, on linen. So this is that fine art aspect being thrown into the traditional quilting craft. I love that hybrid that she makes. And as you probably have noticed, although I'm kind of blocking the view, this work was actually done in two formats. We have the story quilt on the wall, and then just to the left of it, or the right, depending on which way you're facing, we have a bound book, a 42-page book with the same images. And so these are a nice pair that are both owned by the museum and obviously both on view in this exhibition right now. I encourage you to look at both of them later after this art stop. As I said, there's a lot of lovely detail that can be missed if we don't get close and look. So starting from the outside in, let's just kind of dissect this. I don't like that word, but we're going to use it. So starting with the outside, we have this soft border. Now the soft frame around the work is in reference to Tibetan tankas. And tankas are silk paintings that have a similar soft frame. And I actually have another image to show you. Now, Ringgold took a trip to Amsterdam in 1972. And while there, she saw an exhibition of Tibetan art. And it's said that from that point on, she incorporated this kind of frame in all of her works. And also said that she did this because um, she was able to transport her works more easily. So you can ship a work like this much more easily than a painting or roll it up and take it to a gallery. I don't have confirmation on that, but that's one idea that I read. And I'm going to pass around this image of a Tibetan tanka to give you a sense of what inspiration she was taking from when she made this turn and direction with her work. It's, t I have two different spellings, but the one I landed on was T-H-A-N-G-K-A-S. Uh, Tongas? So, she actually visited Amsterdam, Amsterdam, but the exhibition was of Tibetan art. Now, I also want to point out on this outer frame that this is made of patches of fabric so reminiscent of hand-stitched hand quilts, the tradition that she was pulling from when she started these story quilts. And then we start moving in, and you look at the inner border. Now that inner border, if you can't tell, is a painted border. And those colorful triangles are actually uh, referencing a Central African design motif. African-American quilters often looked at the shapes and designs of their African history, and so Ringgold in this way is pulling from that same tradition. And then on the top and bottom of that colorful pattern, you'll notice some text. Text and image are often seen in Ringgold's work. And sometimes that text and image are related, and other times they're contradictory. In the case of this text, it is related. I'm not going to go deeply into it, but again, after this art stop, I invite you to read it and make those connections for yourself between the text and the panels on the inside. So those central panels, obviously, our eyes are drawn to them. They're prominent, and they are, I would say, a very important element in telling this story that she's trying to tell. And the story is this biographical narrative of her and her life. It's a story of her development, really. And the way to read this story is to start at the top left, and then we're going to kind of zigzag down. It's not exactly chronological as far as I understand, but close enough. So I'm going to go in that direction. And begin with that top left image. We have a child and a mother. Any guesses as to who we're looking at? It's not that hard, right? <laughs> We're looking at Faith and Willie. Willie, again, remember, is her mother who taught her quilting. So this is an image, obviously, uh, talking about when Faith was born. So she is born, and there it begins. And then we start to move to the right. And in the center there on that top row, we see an image of a young girl in a bed. Now this image is, again, an image of Faith, a little older, but still a child. 
Now, when she was young, she suffered from asthma, and that asthma was so extreme that it often made her bedridden. And so when she was in these boring moments in bed, she needed to keep herself entertained, and what she ended up doing was really developing an interest in art making. And so this is kind of the start of her art career. And then we go to the right of that, and we have a very different image. We have two young boys, one African American and one white, next to one another eating watermelon. And I can tell you to their right is George Washington. Now, obviously this is not an image from her actual history, but what it is is it's a reconstructed history and a tie-in to, I believe, her feelings about the need for equal rights. She was very much, or is very much, still an activist in civil rights and equal rights, both for African Americans and for women. And so this ties into kind of that concept and how it connects with her. We go to the second row, and the first image on the left, does anybody recognize that sculpture? Um, I believe that this image is, of, um, is referencing the, let's see, City College in New York, but it does look similar to that. But there's a tie-in here, and I'll make that connection for you. So this is actually a tie-in for her interest in education. And she had a dream of going to City College, and at the time when she was interested in that, uh, women were matriculated to the School of Education. And so she did actually begin her career as an art teacher in the New York City public school system. Uh, but later on, she became a professor of visual arts at the University of California, San Diego from 1984 to 2002. So a definite tie-in to her, her education and then her career as an educator. In the middle and to the right, I'm going to connect these two images. We have in the middle this lovely, fantastical image of a young girl flying over a bridge. This is a reference to place. This is the George Washington Bridge in New York. So again, a reference to her past. But both of these images are actually coming from another story quilt, probably one of her most famous, and also an accompanying children's book that she created called Tar Beach. And I'm going to tell you in a little while a little bit more about the story of Tar Beach. It's sort of a nice end point. But I will tell you about the title Tar Beach because it connects nicely with this panel on the right in the middle row. That young girl is standing on a black asphalt on a roof. And when Ringgold was young, her family lived in an apartment building. And on hot summer nights, her family and the neighbors would travel up to that roof to cool off, to feel the outside air. And that roof was made with tar paper. And so they affectionately referred to it as Tar Beach. So this is the reason for this title and the connection to these images in this quilt. This quilt is a nice kind of compilation of a lot of her other story quilts, as you're probably already discovering. And then we finish on the final row, and you'll see on the far left an image again, two individuals. You've probably picked up on the fact that a lot of people on these panels are flying. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that, and I'll keep you in mystery, but just be patient for a couple more minutes. First, I'll mention that that panel is these two individuals flying by a mosaic mural at 125th Street uh, subway station in Harlem. So again, another reference to place. In the center, we have another reference to uh, another story quilt that she created. And that one was called Dancing at the Louvre, which told the story of an African-American family visiting Paris in the 1930s. As I understand it, it also ties into an experience she had herself going to the Louvre with a friend and her young girls, and they're dancing in the galleries, which I'm sure raised some eyebrows, but you know, obviously a happy memory for her. So I'll pass this around. This is an image of that story quilt that I was mentioning, part of a wider series that she created. And then we finish on this one, and I think it's an appropriate finish. Another image of flying people, and we'll talk about that. But those people are actually identifiable. That is Ringgold. 
and it is her flying with her husband, Burdette or Bertie Ringgold. And again, they're flying over the George Washington Bridge. So they're talking about place and their connection to it. And <clears throat> there are a few overall things that I want to mention, and then I'm going to finish up with telling you about why everybody's flying in the panels. But let me mention that the colors in this, if you've picked up on this, there's a they're predominant kind of dark greens, red, and black, which may tie into the African-American flag. Also, really dominant is this color black. And that is, as I understand it, intentional. And I have a quote I want to read from Ringgold speaking to this. She says, black art must use its own color black to create its own light, since that color is most immediate black truth. So obviously an intentional motif and rich in meaning, like all of her artistic choices, as you've picked up probably, every element of this piece has meaning and has connection to her. So I'll finish up by telling you a little story. And this is actually the story of the young girl, the heroine of Tar Beach. Her name is Cassie Lightfoot. Now Cassie Lightfoot, like Ringgold, uh, enjoyed going to the top level of her apartment building at night when it was hot outside on those su hot summer nights. And one night she's up there with her family and they're picnicking on the black asphalt. She's lying back and she's dreaming. And what she's dreaming is this idea of her flying over her city. And she's flying over landmarks that she knows. So the George Washington Bridge, this image in the center, that's a reference to that story. She also flies over buildings such as the Union Building, which for Ringgold has a connection. This is a space her father, an African-American man, was not able to join the Union. So when Cassie flies over these buildings, she begins to own them. And so it's very poignant that she would fly over a building like the Union Building. It speaks, I think, to this idea of overcoming obstacles or literally kind of finding a way around them even if that means flying over them. So when I look at these individuals in these panels who are also flying in that same way, I think it speaks to hope and this idea, and this is a quote from the book, that anyone can fly. So Ringgold, you know, we look at this work and maybe on first glance it seems like a, a heartwarming, kind of disarming quilt piece. And it certainly has the, those characteristics. But I think when we dig deeper, we discover that there's a lot of rich meaning there, and there's a lot of powerful messaging there as well. And that's really what she's about in all of her artwork. So that's my art stop. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you so much for your attention today. Thank you.